All right, this is a little sun video I took uh, yesterday, 428, 2017. And what I did was I uh, uh, used my manual focus, uh, plus two, I had cut my exposure levels down on it quite a bit. Um, exposure bracketing, um, also um, the compensation exposure. Um, the ISO was set as low as I could go. Um, and in the lighting where you set on daylight, um, I had it down to minus three. Um, and, and the whole purpose of this was to cut a lot of the light because when you have all that light coming from the sun, it will appear to blare right through the less dense clouds. Now, sometimes too, when we're looking at the sun, um, you'll have uh, some areas that are so, that are, less dense but when zoomed in upon they almost appear black um but these aren't black it's just more of a clearer sky um that just appears black in in the video so you, you have to determine what's the the darker ones and what aren't um when you're zoomed away from it but as you zoom in you will actually start picking up um the clouds that you don't normally see um and this was a prime example of it um, as I did this video. Um, you know, I, I go out and I look around the horizon and, you know, this particular day I was getting nearing again, even though I had this uh, compensation set. Um, and I have my theory on why I got such good footage uh, a, a few weeks ago or a week or so ago. Um, and it was because my sky was uh, full of clouds above me. But, as we look at the the, moon, the sun right now, the moon, yeah, right, um, the sun right now, um, it does appear to have clouds behind it. Um, and this is because the sun is so bright, it's burning through those less dense clouds. Now, these aren't real thick, heavy, heavy clouds. And this is the problem. When you have these thin, less dense clouds um, in front of the sun, the sun will just burn right through them. Now, if you can get a sunspot um, to show up on your camera, that is the setting that you want to use. Um, because if you can see these sunspots, um, it tells you that you've got the light cut down to the pretty much the right setting to where you'll actually see the clouds when you actually zoom in on it. Um, so right now I'm zoomed away and um, here, here in a little bit, I, I will zoom in on it. Again, I'm in the manual focus, and when you're looking at this tiny little screen, it's kind of, it is kind of hard to get it set on the right focus. So I had a little issue with focusing it right, but the focus shouldn't matter for uh, being able to really show these clouds. And you'll see what I mean uh, when I actually do zoom in on it. it it'll be a little bit yet, a uh, minute or so. Um, but you see this one cloud at the bottom of the sun right here, that you can actually see going through the sun, but now as the sun, uh, you know, gets farther down on it, it almost appear as if uh, it disappears. But that that cloud's still there. It's just that the sun is brighter, and the darker area, the darker line that you see underneath that, um, is actually less dense clouds, but they're appearing like a darker cloud, but it's really not because with the naked eye, I could see that um, it was almost a blue sky in those areas. Now, as far as uh, farther under the sun there, uh, that darker band uh, is, is some more thinner clouds, but there's even a darker one underneath it, or that is probably the dark, dark, dark one. But, uh, you know, the, the whole purpose is, is to show you that this right here, what you're looking at, it, it does. Um, there's no doubt that it appears that these clouds are literally um, behind the sun. Um, now, is the sun, is that sun the true sun or is it a uh, projection of the true sun? Um, this is something that, you know, a lot of us... Uh, 
flat earthers are researching and trying to find out if it's a, a refracted light from the true sun. So these are things that, you know, we are taking into consideration, but I'm not claiming that that's exactly what that is. So, you know, I, I have to look at it both ways and still be open-minded. Um, but as far as the shape of the earth, um, we live in the plane of existence. Now, here shortly, I'm, I'm going to start zooming in on it. Now, you also see that little yellow band at the bottom of the sun. Now, that's, again, that's a, a little thicker of a cloud, a little more dense of a cloud. And with the naked eye, you could actually see that, too, that it was dense. Now, as I zoom in here, you're going to start seeing those less dense clouds. Now, I'm, I am out of focus, and I apologize for that, but I, I do work the focus. That, again, I'm on manual focus, so I do work the focus a little bit. And then I, I do get out of focus again, but I, I get it back into focus a little bit later. Uh, again, I'm looking at this tiny little screen, and I do have uh, kind of the light of the sun in my face, and it's kind of hard to see that little screen sometimes. Uh, but uh, what, what I'd like to do is put a shield up. But right almost in the middle of the sun, you can see a little black dot, too, um, or a little darker dot. Now, that's a sunspot. So I know I'm cutting the light on uh, in my camera settings. I'm cutting all that exposure back, and this is why I'm able to see that little dark spot. Now, hopefully you can see it when I, when I post this on, on YouTube. Uh, I know sometimes the quality ain't quite as good as uh, the original video. So, got to take that into consideration. Um, and you'll notice, too, sometimes when I move the camera and the angle of light changes, it, it, it will make the sun change, too, the light of the sun change. So, um, you got to take that into consideration. It has a lot to do with angles, too, um, and the angle of, you know, the way the sun's leading away from me and not going around, the, you know, or over any curvature. Um, it, it's just getting farther. Now, people will, you know, the trolls will say, well, why ain't it getting smaller and smaller? Well, you know, in some videos that if you actually look at it, it does get slightly smaller um, if you test it. Uh, a couple of mine, I know I it gets smaller, but... I'm not really great at graphics and and showing um, basically how how to do some of that stuff. So I do it for myself. I do all of this mainly for myself, and, and I share it with others um, because I want them to see the truth or or see exactly what I'm seeing and let them make up their own mind. You know, make your own decision up of what you're actually seeing here. But I don't see. Uh, clouds behind the sun. Like I say, some of those darker spots, like if I pull away, you'll see that they're a lighter, less dense cloud, not um, a solid cloud um, like they appear to. As I zoom in, they kind of go dark, but again, that's because they're less dense and because of the way my camera's set up to cut out all that light, you don't see them. But you can obviously see these ones in front of the sun. So this this proves it for me that what I'm looking at is, um, you know, the sun itself, or might not be the sun itself. It might be a projection of the sun. Uh, the moon might be projected. But I'm not saying that that's a fact. I'm saying that it's a possibility. And that's the difference between, you know, when the trolls come on and say, well, you think this or you believe that. No, I don't. I take it into consideration. Now, you can see the glow of the white, the top of the sun, and as it goes down lower, now while it was glowing there, it was showing those less dense clouds. See how it's still glowing where that pink cloud is, and it makes it almost appear? But look at it as it pulls down. You can see that that's all one cloud just blended in, and it's got some density to it uh, in areas. And... Uh, more density in other areas. And of course, this dark band, dark, dark band at the bottom is a big dark band across the horizon that's obviously seen with the naked eye. And that's just a big buildup of clouds. It's a big, thick cluster of clouds on the horizon. Now, 
Um, I do zoom around here a little bit. Um, I always like catching it after the sun leaves. Now, I, if you compare this to my video of do boats really go over the curvature of Earth, you'll see a big difference. Again, I got this mirroring again. And I was kind of upset about it because I thought, you know, uh, my settings was going to cut it out. But there's some other things that I found that um, might actually been what helped me catch these boats actually on the water itself. Um, because this is the normal videos that I get where you got um, boats that appear to be floating in the air. Now, one of the things that I, I tell you is that when they're up on that mirror is you do not see the waves because the waves are in that mirror. So the mirroring hides the waves to where you don't see them. Now, one of the things that uh, <laughs> I show here is these uh, crab trap markers. Okay, they're little uh, buoys, um, little uh styrofoam balls that they put a string through and tie a knot on and they have crab traps underneath them. Now, look at how they bob up and down and how the waves hide the lower ends of them. And the farther out they get, the more the waves will hide them. Okay, there's four of them there. And you can see these things when waves come up, they dip down and they dip up. Well, if a boat is out there on the horizon and you don't see those waves, then all you're seeing is the mirroring of the top part of the boat. It's not a mirage. It's a, it's a, it's maybe an illusion that there's another boat underneath it, but it's definitely not a mirage. It's just a mirroring of the true boat that's above it. So the true boat that's above it is uh, above the visible water plane, but it's still in the water. Otherwise, it, you know, it wouldn't be out there. But you can see that these bobbers or, you know, crab trap markers are literally being blocked out by these little waves that are right here. So imagine what a big wave, you know, a two, three foot wave would do. Okay, now the farther you get offshore, the harder the winds are. Um, and then, you know, you get a lot of waves. Now, it can work opposite that. I've, I've gone out fishing, grouper fishing, and on our way out, we got the living crap beat out of us, and when we got to a certain distance, man, it was like glass out there, and literally like glass. That's why I say, um, you know, due to the angle of my camera and, and my distance that I'm zoomed out to, the angle is what's creating that mirror, the mirroring effect of the water further out there. Um, and I noticed when I got my footage from uh, do boats go, really go over the curvature of earth that that day I had clouds directly above me blocking out of the, a lot of the sun's light which you would think that would, would be happening here but I think because uh, the sun was directly still above me I was there early that day um, that that's why I got that footage um, I think the clouds act like a natural filter and filter out that sunlight to where I could make my screen darker and actually get past that mirroring and actually see the boats on the water, uh, literally on the water. So if you didn't see that video, check that one out. Um, and that's why I kind of left this little part on here. Um, and I got, I got more footage from this day too, where I was out, actually out there videotaping these boats at night uh, or toward as it got darker, uh, which was very interesting. Um, when put in my program and I brighten up the screen, you can definitely see them. But on the original video, you can't. And maybe I'll post some of them, but I will definitely let you know that um, I changed the brightness of the video. All right, this next part right here, uh, what I did was I uh, put it in slow motion because I, I just wanted you to see that darker band on the horizon. Um, you know, so you can see what the sky actually looked like. So you can see less dense clouds. You actually see can see some chemtrails there, remnants of them. There's like four or five, six of them in that picture alone. Um, but, uh, you know, look at the distance that I'm zoomed out at. And now you got to imagine the angular resolution. Um, 
that causes my camera not to see and, and actually that's part of that mirroring process that causes that mirroring is that angular resolution but if you can cut and filter out a lot of the light uh, sometimes you will actually see those waves and you actually see the boats literally on top of the water like i say go back and compare some of my videos to that and you will see what i'm talking about and, and you'll have to agree that uh this footage where I caught a lot of the light, you could see the boat literally on the water. And these boats just get so small that they disappear and blend right into the water line. All right, like, subscribe, and share. Have a good day. I hope you enjoyed this one.